You've got a trip coming up. Maybe it's a mountaineering expedition or a long through hike, a trek that goes for multiple weeks. A question you might ask yourself is, how exactly do I train for hiking and mountaineering? It isn't as simple as walking into a gym, choosing a few exercises, picking up the weights, putting them down, jogging a couple times a week and maybe hiking once a month. An effective training program for hiking and mountaineering is a lot more complex than that. Mountaineering is an incredibly difficult activity. There isn't any way to exactly mimic the stress that mountaineering puts on your body through simple training. Climbing a mountain is far more different to running a marathon. You've got a lot less assistance, less oxygen, colder temperatures, higher altitude, harsher terrain, big boots, heavy equipment, cumbersome clothing, this goes on. But what mountaineering and running have in common is that the training practices for increasing endurance are universal. Training for mountaineering requires the right mix of aerobic endurance training combined with strength and conditioning to achieve success. When I say mountaineering or hiking in this video or in the videos to come, they can be used interchangeably as the training principles apply to both of them. No matter what trail you want to tackle or what mountain you want to climb, it could be Mount Everest, Denali, Kilimanjaro, the theory and the practices stay the same. Now, why should you train for mountaineering? And that might seem like a, a silly question to ask, but there are a number of different benefits that you can gain through following a structured training program. The main point for following a structured training program for mountaineering is to be able to control your fatigue levels. Fatigue is the biggest controllable factor that's going to get between you reaching the summit and not reaching the summit. With fatigue being controllable, it is controllable through your training. If you follow a well-structured training program, that includes the elements that I'll list in this video in the following episodes, then you'll be able to manage fatigue correctly and ensure your safety. An effective mountaineering training program will also increase your ability to move over difficult terrain. This could be through technique training or simply gaining experience with countless hours on various trails. Being able to move over difficult terrain in combination with gaining speed and power is also very important to maintaining your safety. Why speed is so important is because the faster you get up the mountain, the quicker you can get down and the quicker you move over terrain the less likely you are to run into any dangers associated with warming temperatures smaller weather windows really there is no downside to increasing your speed but to be quick and efficient at moving over difficult terrain you need to gain experience you need to have the right skills you need to have the right amount of aerobic endurance the right amount of muscular endurance and the right amount of strength how do you gain all of these things and how do you know if you'll be ready for the challenge that you wish to tackle. Experience is experience. Get out onto the trails, go and climb lesser peaks than your target destination. If your goal is to do a multi-week trek, maybe you can go for a week. Experience is probably the most simple to acquire as it's pretty straightforward. Go out and do the activity, that's experience. Any amount of hours that you put in is going to be beneficial. Skill is about getting better at your craft. For hiking, this might not be as straightforward as gaining mountaineering skills. Mountaineering skills you can break down to learning technique, completing more difficult climbs, learning how to use the tools, learning conditions, all things that you can learn in a simple mountaineering course, or maybe you want to take it further and do an advanced mountaineering course. These are all things that you can do and have in your grasp. But the main purpose of this video and the videos to follow is your ability to train your aerobic endurance, your muscular endurance, and your strength. These are all things that you can do and practice and work on right now, today, in your home, at the gym, on the trail, wherever. The world's your oyster, and I'm here to help you be able to do it. We can break mountaineering training down into two main categories, general training and specific training. General training is conditioning that is not directly related to the activity that you're training for. It's to build a general base level of fitness. General training for mountaineering can look like weight training, can be running, jogging, certain activities that don't exactly transfer directly over into what you'll be doing. So for example, running doesn't exactly translate into mountaineering if you're simply running on a flat trail. As for mountaineering, as you can imagine, you'll be up steep inclines, different types of terrain, different types of weather, different types of clothing. So running doesn't exactly translate as well as other activities. These other activities that do directly relate to mountaineering would be classified as specific training. Now, specific training doesn't have to exactly mimic your chosen activity, 
being mountaineering, but it can get pretty close and it can try and get as close to the activity as possible. The main example of specific training for mountaineering, as I mentioned before, is climbing mountains that are of less difficulty than your target climb. That's pretty much as close as you can get to training specifically for mountaineering. In more general terms, it's simply doing a lesser variation of your target activity. So if you want to branch this into hiking, as the example that I gave before with through hiking, which can be multiple weeks or multiple months, specific training for through hiking could look like you going on a week long hike rather than a month long hike. Specific training also includes certain activities that closely resemble your target activity. For mountaineering, this could look like doing pack training with mountaineering boots on. Uh, it could also look like doing rock climbing with mountaineering boots on. An effective program will be able to combine general and specific training as both of them have different goals when it comes to your fitness and what they're actually training. General training is training your general level of fitness. It's to develop your strength and conditioning in a non-specific manner, uh, your aerobic endurance, a little bit of your muscular endurance, whereas Specific training is more so designed to build the exact systems and muscles that are required to complete mountaineering or hiking. And that relates more to your aerobic capacity and your muscular endurance rather than more generalized health and fitness. Training for mountaineering can be broken down into four different elements, strength and conditioning, aerobic endurance, muscular endurance, and specific training and technique. Strength and conditioning training is your body's ability to produce force. In terms of mountaineering, that is your body's ability to put force down through your boot to propel your body forwards and upwards. Developing strength is vitally important for increasing your power and speed. It is also very important for preventing injuries and developing the strength of your joints and small muscle groups. And having more strength will also increase your baseline for muscular endurance training, which comes very in handy as your training progressive and moves more into the specific training. Now, what strength training looks like is mainly weightlifting programs, but not just any particular exercises. These exercises will be more uh, skewed towards the very specific muscles that you need for mountaineering. So you won't be seeing a lot of bench pressing in a mountaineering specific weightlifting program. Rather, you'd be seeing activities like squats, lunges, step ups, things of that nature. Within strength and conditioning, it is also important to focus a bit of your time on flexibility and unhindered movement. You need to make sure that you're able to move in a full range of motion and for this to be completely pain free, no stiffness and focusing on joint health is also very important. This can look like following a stretching routine, doing yoga a couple times a week, just things to ensure that your body is moving as it should. The next element of mountaineering training, one that is extremely important and will encompass most of your training is aerobic endurance. Mountaineering and hiking are aerobic activities. This is because it can take hours and sometimes days to complete. Your body has various systems that supply you with the energy that you need to complete a movement. And for activities that last longer periods of time, this system is called your aerobic metabolic system. This system supplies oxygen to your muscles at the rate that your body is able to acquire the oxygen. This also occurs in conjunction with your body using your fat stores as a primary source of energy. As aerobic endurance is such an important factor when it comes to mountaineering and hiking, you need to spend the majority of your time training focusing on aerobic endurance. You do this by training at a specific heart rate intensity for long periods of time. This heart rate intensity is known as zone 2. Zone 2 exercise should feel low to moderate in difficulty, and it should be at a level just below where your body would kick into using another form of energy. This is known as the anaerobic system. The duration for your aerobic training should be at a minimum of 30 minutes, but it can be hours. And it is recommended that you go for as long as you can, because the more aerobic training you do, the better your aerobic endurance will be. We will dive deeper into this in the specific episode for aerobic endurance, but for now, this is all that you need to know. Now, another crucial aspect of training for mountaineering is muscular endurance. This is your muscle's ability to perform repeated movements over and over and over again. For hiking and mountaineering, your body needs to be able to work all day. Your muscles need to be strong enough and conditioned to perform movements over and over again at high altitudes 
cold temperatures, difficult terrain, and whilst wearing heavy equipment. You can train muscular endurance through high repetition weight training or through exercises like weighted pack training. The training needs to put adequate strain onto your muscles for it to be counted as muscular endurance. So general aerobic training like running and jogging may not be enough to trigger muscular endurance. Activities such as heavy pack training, however, certainly would trigger your muscular endurance as it's going to put the majority of the force on your muscles to lift their weight up. For endurance training, both aerobic and muscular, there are three main important factors to remember. You need to stay consistent with your training. It needs to be a structured program. You can't just one week decide you want to do a session, maybe the next week none at all. You need to stay consistent and build up progression over time, which is the second important element of endurance training progression. You need to continually be developing your strength and progress in the movement. The third important factor of endurance training is modulation, and this is just changing up the intensity of the exercise over time. This can be day to day, week to week. What I like to do is have one week per month where I drop back in the training intensity. The last element of mountaineering training that we will be discussing in this series is specific training and technique. As we said before, these are activities that directly relate to mountaineering and hiking or whatever chosen activity you will be training for. So for mountaineering and hiking, this would look like going and climbing lesser mountains, hiking on difficult hiking trails, rock climbing, ice climbing, glacier traversing, any specific exercise that you'll actually be completing on your chosen activity. These are activities that are pretty much the exact same as what you are training to do, but just at an easier level. Specific training is where you want to spend most of your time. This is difficult to do because not everyone lives near mountainous terrain or has the time to go out and do these things consistently enough for it to be considered training. There are ways to supplement this with general training and they are very effective, but in terms of the most effective training that you can do, it is incorporating as much specific training as you can. This is because you can't quite get close enough to the exact training stimulus that you need without essentially copying what you aim to do. You can get close, but you can't get right there. So any good mountaineering training routine is going to include you doing hikes uh, that get progressively longer and progressively more difficult. You can include you doing climbs whenever possible, but this is all so specific to your situation. So it's really as much as you can do. Specific training would also include skills and technique for activities like hiking. This isn't necessary as you would most likely be able to gain those skills and technique through simply hiking but for activities like mountaineering or rock climbing you need to be slowly progressing to the intensity of the climb that you're going to be going and doing so you can't simply expect to be able to climb k2 if you've never done mountaineering before or well, i'm sure now you could probably find a way to pay for sherpas to drag you up there but these skills would look like learning how to traverse correctly on snow and ice, mixed climbing, rock scrambling and climbing, rope skills, learning how to use various tools, understanding snow and ice conditions. These are all things that you can learn pretty much through any sort of advanced mountaineering course. Training for mountaineering is vital for a successful and a safe trip. Over the coming weeks, I'll be releasing dedicated episodes on each of the training elements that I've discussed in this episode. We'll be going into more detail going over exact programs that you can follow and to equip you with the knowledge that you need to be able to continually progress with that program. I'll also be releasing content and training ideas on my website and my blog, which I'll have links for in the description. If you'd like to read a little bit more on the subject already, I have a training article up on my website right now, basically going over all the same stuff that I've told you about in this episode. I'll have that link below as well. That's all for now. Stay tuned for the next episodes that are to come in the following weeks, but until then, Happy hiking.